The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This is Girls Talk, Boys Talk, presented by Jigsaw Dating, preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys, and broadcasting live from Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star. Now, your hosts, Christy Scales, Aisha Morrison, Nicole Hutchison, and Jess Navarez. What's up, Cowboys Nation? Happy Wednesday. Welcome into Girls Talk, Boys Talk, presented by Jigsaw, the preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. In the SWBC studio, I'm Nicole Hutchison alongside Aisha Morrison, Jess Navarez, and we got a special guest in Yay! the studio. Yay! I was just Nick hanging Harris, around. Yeah. See, yeah, I'm just waiting on the schedule, you know. So wow, it's like, let's, all of us uh, vibes. So why not? See what's up with the see what's up with the gals. Yeah. Vibes. Yeah. We appreciate yeah. you, man. Yeah, Always. appreciate y'all. Yeah, and finally, I, I'm worthy enough to be on the show. Wow, wow. That's, that's crazy. Wow. This is a high honor. A high honor for me. <laughs> you know the shade. I knew he was gonna I make know. a scene. You know, of course he is. He <laughs> came in here. <laughs> he was like pretty much demanding to come on the podcast. He's like, let me on the podcast. Right. And like, I mean, I guess. You know. That's how it went down. This is my tryout. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We appreciate okay. it. I'll come back next week with like a wig. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> what color wig? That's a great question. Wow. I do probably, believe... probably the red to, to match with my beard, you know? That'd Ooh, be good. I do believe there was good. a bet red. with the tutu last year, too. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I didn't lose, so here I am. All right, but yep. I still have that tutu in my closet that Noted. I told you I would lend to you. Noted. Maybe we do a, a bet during the season then. Ooh, I think we'll, the red's maybe. really going to bring out your eyes. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's I got a good one. question. How long is the weave going to be? Uh, Let's let's go like, like mid back. <laughs> mid back. Oh. Yeah, like that's like thirty inches. Yeah, not I know, I know. I want, I want to whip it around. But not you know the language. <laughs> Mid back. Speaking of the language, oh nah, I got it for y'all gosh. today. We're gonna talk schedule. Let's do it. But I mean, all, right. all we have, I know schedule release is gonna come out in a couple of hours. We don't know exactly time, the time, but uh, for now, we have the Cleveland Browns opening up the regular season. Just talk a little bit about what's what stands out the most. I feel like what's gonna be the biggest challenge for that. For you guys. And that Cleveland defense we saw mm-hmm. last year, not only can they rush the passer at a high clip, they yeah. play with an aggressiveness the whole game. They have corners that can cover well as well. So this Dallas offense that's coming off of mm-hmm. um, an install year, because I have to remind myself that it's only been – That was the first season of Mike McCarthy's West Coast offense coming into it. We can see how this offense maybe has improved or they're picking up where they left off last year. Um, It's going to be a test. uh, That that trench trench warfare is going to be nasty. People, it's going to be some boxing going on. I think for me, what stands out the most, you look at Miles Garrett and you think Tyler Mm -hmm. Guyton. That's going to be a big test for him coming out the gate. Mm -hmm. Um, And it just kind of goes to show how important this offseason is going to be. OTAs and training camp and the preseason as far as like working on that cohesion with this offensive offensive line. Uh, but I know McCarthy had really mentioned last week that something that he wants to do is start letting that offensive line battle kind of play out a little bit longer than he's used to doing. So I, th- I think that'll be a really interesting matchup with those two guys. I think for me, you know how much I love a revenge game. Uh, Amari Cooper revenge game coming up, possibly. I don't want to talk about it. Uh, I do want to talk about it, actually, because, look, this is the first time – Amara gets to face his former team. We all know how that storyline goes, blah, blah, blah. But for me, what I want to see, because it's the revenge game, and you know that's going to be the storyline coming forward, Mm -hmm. I want this wide receiver group to have the best start of the season that they possibly can. I'm talking uh, CeeDee Lamb game all the way. I want to see Brandon Cooks involved. I want to see, first game of the season, more of that ball distribution going around and getting the wide receivers involved and getting the tight ends involved in the passing game as well. So for me... That's what I want to see. I want to see the re- the Amari Cooper revenge game, but reversed. Yeah. We're not going to let him get the revenge because I want to see the wide receiver and tight end involvement in the passing game. So you're saying uh, C.D. Lamb's going to be back <laughs> in time for week one? Oh, you're, yeah. you're you know, that like, you don't have to come in here and stir the pot. <laughs> you really no, don't. It's only right for him to do that. He'll be. I, I think he will be. <laughs> be. Um, yeah, I agree. But I, I think for me, whenever this this uh, this game dropped on the schedule, yeah, Tyler Guyton versus Miles mm-hmm. Garrett to open the season, that was probably the first thing I thought of as well. Um, but also, you look at Nick Chubb returning from his uh, injury. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Literally, that's it. Very, very nasty injury that he <laughs> suffered last season. So... 
how can they get the running game established uh, with uh, with him back into the fold. And, you know, they had some guys step up on the offensive side of the ball in his place last year, but um, they're still going to need, you know, Chubb to be able to come back and be at least some sort of version of himself that he was. But, yeah, Amari Cooper, that's going to be a fun little storyline to track. And then Tom Brady in his broadcasting oh, debut. Mm-hmm. There's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of eyeballs on that. Also a lot of eyeballs on how he talks about the Cowboys, obviously yeah. just for, for multiple reasons. But yeah. I think it's going to be a fascinating week one. When you talk about – oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, when you talk about uh, how long it took for this Cowboys offense to really, like, find its identity last year in 2023, what do you think – or how crucial is it for them to really hit the ground running when it comes to week one this year? Considering, I mean, you know, Mike McCarthy's last final year yeah. and – well – on his contract. <laughs> on his con- <laughs> on the contract. On contract. got to specify. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but, no, nah, I, I mean, I think it's important. But also, too, I, we're seeing the investment that they're making into the offensive line and some of the things that they're trying to do. Yeah. I do think it's important that they establish – even though this team has become an aerial attack, which I'm happy about because let's keep it a buck. <laughs> That's a lot of what the NFL is, but we've seen in these these tough situations or these playoff situations, these close game situations, these teams that are able to go power and run the ball and finish these games and drain clock and stuff, it means something. So for me, I definitely want to see how this aerial attack takes a step forward. We're tr- trying to see who who's going to be wide, wide receiver three. Who's going to be wide receiver four? We'll, we'll get some answers there because this secondary for um, the Browns is nothing to snuff at as well. So they're going to be tested. But I really want to see um, – I think this will give us a good indication with how well Cleveland's defense plays the run. Yeah. Maybe starting to get a feel with what this run game could look like. Again, it's week one, so a lot of people are just kind of – you're, you're trying stuff out. You're throwing stuff yeah. at the wall because yeah. you can only get so much information from training camp, right? So, I, But I do – I am going to be paying attention to the formations. I am going to be paying attention to what the lineups look like, some of the things they do with the tight ends, as just mentioned. This is an opportunity to kind of put their foot forward as uh, from a running game perspective mm-hmm. as well, going up against a tough uh, Cleveland defensive line as well. Yeah, and to that same point, <laughs> I, I think early in the season, that's going to be probably the thing I look at the most whenever the schedule drops tonight. The first thing is, okay, where – in the first six weeks, where are the really good run defenses? Talk about it. Because mm-hmm. if, the, if because if it's stacked there and there's an opportunity for the Cowboys to not really do a whole lot on the ground early in the season, then when do we start talking about them possibly making a move to help in the running game? You know, right. or Talk does that happen it. before then? So uh, I, I think that's certainly a storyline. There's a ton of really good opponents that are on this schedule already. What, how do they kind of line up? Where do they where do they fall within the schedule? It's 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 going to be a lot of schedule dynamics that you got to play into tonight. Yeah. And not to mention what we always talk about is those wins early on matter because let's look at what happened last season where you're going into the last couple weeks of the season and you could still potentially be the top of the NFC. So winning early, taking care of business. I mean, truly, what, what else could you want? No, it matters. And the depth on this team is going to be important. You know, of course, to your point, Jess, you think back to the Cardinals game. We think about how pivotal <laughs> that, that, although early in the year, how pivotal it ended up being mm-hmm. towards the end of the year with mm-hmm. NFC yep. contention. Yep. Yo, know, like, to your point, you, I know a lot of teams kind of use those first few games to get a feel mm-hmm. or whatever the case may be because of the lack of preseason and some of the stuff going on. Correct me. Did they change preseason? Are uh, there more games, more or less still games? Three games. Yeah. Yeah. Still three games. Just three. So, so, it's, so, been a long, it's been a long year. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's the first time we're going to okay. see them in game speed. So yeah. let's let's uh, hold on to our pants. All right. Hold uh, on. I'm, I am. Oh, goodness. Well, we got a caller, y'all. Oh, uh, we're going to take Nick out of Longview, Texas. Nick, what do you got for us? <laughs> well, it's ah. Nick, but close enough. Neither here nor there. How y'all doing? Nick! Oh, hey! Hey! Hi! Hello. Hey, it's how we love you. Schedule release day. <laughs> Happy schedule release day. It's been fun so far. Look at these games coming across here. Looks like three of our first five want to be on the road. Fun stuff. <laughs> well, there you go. Jesus. My guy, Nick's my Isn't East Texas brethren. How you doing? Nick's. <laughs> doing good. Doing good. Doing good. Always a fun time for the you know, schedule to get released uh, and whatnot. But I had a defensive tackle question for y'all, if y'all don't mind. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. A, I know we need look, three spots that look available. I feel like we should add one. My question is, what type, if, if y'all are in agreement on adding a defensive tackle to the 90 man roster, what are you looking for? Are you looking for more of a one tech, a three tech, or you just need a body in here? We need some more fatties, guys. This is where I'm at, ladies and gentlemen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Uh, what you got, Nick? Yeah, you, got? you need a lot of you need a guy that can eat a lot of burgers that can really <laughs> fill in in that one tech spot. In my eyes, fifty I, I burgers. Think, yeah, exactly. Oh, wow. I think you need that <laughs> three hundred twenty pound plus body type just to be able to fill fill that gap. And you look at the undrafted class and then pulling away a guy like Denzel Daxon. You know, if they were going right. after a, a guy that, or if they were going after a position group that they feel like could need some sort of help, okay, then you look at the body type in that sort of room. You look at the safety position, all the safeties that they brought in in that undrafted group, run stoppers, run stoppers. Right. Clear that there's probably a need there. Same at the linebacker position and same at the defensive tackle position. They need that big body. They need a 320 pound plus guy that can just fill those role, uh, fill those holes. I mean, you look at Osa Digizua, mm -hmm. I feel comfortable with what he can do at three tech Absolutely. granted the defensive front might look a little bit different under mike zimmer but i, I you still are going to need that that big body well, i agree i i think uh investing in a one tech is going to be important if they do bring someone else in because when you even look at how zim uses uh his linebackers and stuff like that there should be they should be able to get some um pass rush from the A gap, the B gap, also too. Marshawn Nealon is another guy who can do some can do some things slide in the middle too. So I think you're less deficient when it comes to the three tech situation, Knicks. You more so just need a guy to come in here and eat up double teams. But the thing is, it's like I think you need a veteran there because playing DT, as we know, like we can be high on these undrafted free agents and and, and even um, the gentleman that they drafted in the seventh round. I don't know why his name is Justin, Justin Rogers. Rogers. Justin Rogers. Rogers. I apologize. Yeah, Rogers. Auburn out of Auburn. Big hands. Yeah. He's got some huge hands. Yeah. Right. Dear like God. even though he's he's helpful playing DT and, and two gapping and being disciplined and being patient is something that takes time. I would like a veteran. I agree with you. Well, yeah, and, it's, and double I, double I, don't forget, we still got a guy Chauncey can slide his little three take four. Yeah, I think he needs to slide his tail out to edge and play. I ball. agree. I, I agree. I'm with you. <laughs> what you got, Nicole? Thank you so much, Nick. Uh, make sure to call us at 1-888-855-2297. Again, the number is 1-888-855-2297. Go ahead. Real quick, Check I want to shout out to Nick's oh, because 100%. there is just such an incredible Cowboys community on Twitter and he really spearheads a lot of the creators mm -hmm. uh, the fans even us to have a voice outside of this building and uh, Nick's is incredible so if you don't follow him please go do love him to death great person great human yeah. uh, just had to say that uh, along with this question though I think something too that needs to be said is you cannot have enough depth at that position. Mm -hmm. I mean, truly you can't. And especially after losing a guy like Jonathan Hankins this offseason, uh, Seattle, rude. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, I think you need that veteran presence because yeah. talking to him last year and really understanding that nose tackle position. <laughs> what? Sorry. No, go for it. Go. What? <laughs> I'm with you. I'm locked we're, in. We're here. Thank you, we're here. Thank you Nick. We're you know here. what? It, our guest is paying attention. I gotta bring sanity. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bring order to this. Um, no, I I think uh, talking to Jonathan Hankins, understanding the depth that that nose tackle position that it really takes, and how long the progression it takes for you to just get it as a nose tackle. He said it took about four seasons for him to really yeah. be locked in and understand all of the little. Uh, I guess, like, nooks and crannies, if you will, of being a nose tackle. So I think the more depth you can have at that position, bigger bodies, mm. look, you need to stop yeah. the run. You need to figure it out. Seems like from what we heard from the coordinators and the coaches, yeah. that's – priority yeah uh we'll get into that but yeah i think depth at that position you look at you look at defensive either. line coach jeff mm -hmm. scanina and he plays 17 years in the league at defensive yeah. tackle yeah. I, I think having that kind of presence in that room is going to really help a guy like mozzie smith mm -hmm. um oh, can yeah. really help a guy like denzel daxon or carl davis whoever yep. they want to fill the depth of that position you mentioned the, the depth is you can't have enough of it you're right jess it's really really tough to find and it's it's yeah. so tough to find in this league and i think hopefully with the cowboys uh, evaluation process maybe they found one or two in that undrafted group that can work out let's just say okay. hypothetically speaking of course the cowboys do not add another one tech guy you have carl davis who is that veteran presence that you're obviously looking for to step mm -hmm. up in that position room right but when you think about the fact that he's a 10-year guy but just hasn't really proven himself yet how much confidence do y'all have uh, in him just coming in the system and really producing for this team because I mean he mentioned it to me a couple of weeks ago when I talked to him that he learned so much from Hankins and Neville and those guys that are obviously no longer here he's having to really step up and uh, fill those shoes I mean do y'all have the confidence that he can do that 
Well, he had that opportunity against Miami mm-hmm. last yeah. year. And, and for me, when it comes to, okay, do you have confidence in a guy? All right, what has he done on the field? Mm-hmm. And I just haven't really seen it from Carl Davis. Yeah. Now, that being said, he's got a body type that that they would yeah. probably want at that position. Right. He's got the athleticism they probably mm-hmm. want at that position. It's just going to take a little bit of time, I think, to get him to where they can trust him on the field reliably to take 20 snaps in a game. You know, mm-hmm. that, that's all they need. That's really all yeah. they need at the defensive tackle position. Once Mozzie gets healthy, yeah. um, I, I think there's confidence, at least from the coaching staff, that he can produce. So you just need a guy behind him that can take those 20 snaps and fill the running lanes and or be able to just uh, push the pocket a little bit in the pass game. That's but. a good point. That's a good point that you make uh, in regard to the, the, him just taking that many snaps because that's something that I thought was important last year because of the lack of depth and because of yeah. the injuries and some of those things. Then those guys were taking extended snaps. And so you do, to Jess's point, you want to have the adequate depth so these guys can have fresh legs. To answer your question, yeah. I second what Nick was saying in regard to like us not not seeing it yet you haven't mm-hmm. seen it yet however there are some coaching philosophies and stuff mm-hmm. that could play into mm-hmm. the success there uh, uh how do you say it zagon Z- uh skinina skinina yeah yeah skinina <laughs> i learned that this week too Skanina. well coach i learned it from Nate today. <laughs> <laughs> coach skinina um he mentioned uh stance he's mentioned get off he's mentioned and, and every coach has a different philosophy of how they do things so it, maybe those some of those things some of these coaches may be able to help improve mm-hmm. some of the things that he does um it, it's th- there's the competition is very much alive at that position say it like that for the starting role and i also like the yin and the yang that he compared yesterday mm-hmm. with him and greg allis both mm-hmm. being in that room both former players of course greg Alice, no stranger to the Cowboys world yeah. at all. And if he is, uh, just Google it. Uh, <laughs> um, but no, I, I think having the balance in that room is going to be so important too because you have Scanina who seems like, mm-hmm. what, what did he say, Nick? He's the cannon. He's, He's a loose, loose cannon, cannon, raging lunatic. A raging lunatic, loose cannon. And then you have Greg Alice who he said is more mild than mm-hmm. he is. And so I think having coaches that have been in your position that understand and can relate and can yeah. see things from a player's point of view of, hey, maybe – put your foot this way and try it this way, that can genuinely see things through your eyes is going to be so important, so vital, especially at that position that is much needed. Can I ask a question? Yeah, go for it. How do you guys feel about that? I feel like we're starting to see that more in the league now is you're seeing former players get these coaching jobs. Mm -hmm. It's huge. And it seems like it's working in a way because I I think to your point, Jess, the relatability Mm -hmm. is important. Look at Al Harris. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, It's, it sounds, and it's, and it's, again, it's no knock to anyone that's never played the game, but when you can look a guy in the face Mm -hmm. when they're going to war and they know I've been as a veteran, they know that you've been in that same war before. It just means something. And so I wanted to ask you guys, how do you guys feel about, yeah. that happening like this becoming more of a trend in the nfl um we look at D'Amico ryan's down there in houston how he's turning around yep. that whole program how do you guys feel about it oh I, I rock with it i mean i think you need coaches that are easily relatable like you mentioned um and i think that when you have such young guys they're looking for that that mentorship but not necessarily that Hardcore, not saying anything is wrong with being so hardcore, but (laughs) I think they're looking for that kind of like relatability where they can kind of like talk to you. Like Micah mentioned how Dan Quinn was really like a friend off the field, Mm -hmm. but he was also a coach. Uh, So I think that they're looking for something like that. And I think, like you mentioned, it's kind of paying off. So I think it helps. Yeah, I also think too in that regard, having the balance of being relatable, but also still coaching and not, I guess, being like, I'm just your friend. I'm not I'm not going to like punish you when it needs to be punished or whatever. Like I think players have the understanding of what they needed from a coach and and they can give it back to certain players. And I think what's really cool from what I heard from this coaching staff yesterday is they understand an individualized approach to these players. There's mm-hmm. not like a one type fits all approach that it seems like they're taking because what they talked about with Mozzie was different than what they talked about from, you know, even a guy like D-Law, who's not the same position, but uh, overall they, they understand an individualized approach from a younger guy to an older guy. And even a guy like D-Law, still, uh, I talked to Zanina yesterday about it, and he just pretty much mentioned, like, you know, there's things you can bring out of him that are new to where his game doesn't get kind of nonchalant to him. You can bring new things out in veteran players. So I think not having a one-size-fits-all approach is going to be really mm-hmm. beneficial, and I think having a former player uh, be in that coaching position helps them understand that because they were once in that position. 
Yeah, there's multiple ways to find success, uh, multiple different paths. And I, I think the start comparison you could look at here is Antonio Pierce in Vegas and Mike McDaniel in Miami. Talk about it. So you look at Antonio Pierce in Vegas and him coming in midseason last year, players rallying around him and them picking up some huge wins and kicking the teeth in of the Chargers and things like that. And you also look at Mike McDaniel as another guy that players rally around and might be viewed as, you know, maybe a uh, – <laughs> I'm trying to think of a PG word here. Might be, might be viewed on the outside as maybe uh, difficult but on the inside the players really enjoy being with him uh accountability is really big in mike mcdaniel's system so i, I think there's uh it, it is pretty fun to see the different paths towards success that that uh teams could have uh, mm-hmm. when it comes to player coaches specifically there is always going to be that connection element yeah and i think also uh greg ellis yesterday he told the media house i think this question was actually asked to him how has it been just your path coming to the nfl mm-hmm. uh and taking this coaching position coach uh position job uh, and he mentioned how like it, it, it helps and as far as like working with Zimmer before he can tr- easily translate to the players what he means if they don't really necessarily understand it so I think it also helps in that way as well but you know it's also kind of going to be important Hold on a second. oh here we go the rookies <gasps> we got to take our first break but up next mm. we're talking rookies and how important uh, Thanks, they ladies. will be this, <laughs> I'll be out to this team <laughs> we'll see you later you Nick we're going to take our first yeah, break thank you for we'll having be right me. back <laughs> we know that juicy cheesy grilled to perfection burger sounds amazing but it does sound like something is missing Pepsi baby the yin to this burger's yang burgers and Pepsi go together like Well, like burgers and Pepsi. This perfect blending of flavors makes every bite of lettuce, every sesame seed on the bun, and every sip of that crisp, refreshing, ice-cold cola. A journey to Foodopia. Burgers. Better with Pepsi. That's what I like. At Jigsaw Dating, we obviously want the Cowboys to bring that sixth ring home. But to be honest, we're more focused on finding the person who will put a ring on your finger. That's why we created a dating app that reveals your face through meaningful conversation so you can date deeper. Because it's personality that matters the most, not looks. Join Jigsaw Dating today, dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. for the 2024 Dallas Cowboys football youth camp and dance camps presented by Invisalign. Athletes of all skill levels ages 6 to 16 are invited to learn from the best this summer at the Ford Center at the Star in Frisco. Register for two or three day camps before May 17th to save $25. Visit DallasCowboys.com slash camps. Sounds like a good deal. $25. Go save it. Cha-ching. 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 Not yeehaw. Uh, Not yeehaw. The next one will be. It's all right. All right. Cha-ching. Cha-ching. There you go. Cashing in this offseason. Ah. Oh, oh. <laughs> With the rookies. Okay? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Great picks for the NFL draft this yeah. year. Uh, who are some that obviously have made an impression on you so far? Before we get to Mac- Mike McCarthy's thoughts on this rookie class. Man, you know, getting to talk to some of the rookies, it's one thing to actually hear mm-hmm. and, and um, hear how they are, but until you actually experience yeah. it, I already knew going into this rookie draft class that Cooper Beebe was going to be a guy that just makes an impression. Mm -hmm. Um, But talking to him, it it is just so incredibly stark how how exactly how fit he is for this position, not just in the NFL, but within the Dallas Cowboys. He just he embodies being a Dallas Cowboy and and from day one I'm talking we're meeting the rookies in the locker room Mm -hmm. and he knows how to talk he knows exactly what he's saying he takes every question with grace Um, and and for me that's hard to do as a rookie it's intimidating to do especially when you're here at the star there's a lot going on in this building it's it's a lot for I'm sure a player to take in Um, Cooper BB made such an impression um and man, it, it was really cool to to see him taking those snaps at center. Uh, and and uh, I, I believe who was it? I think it was Shotty actually that said that uh, Schottenheimer yeah. said he looked comfortable at center, and that's mm-hmm. something you want to hear yeah. from this guy who is uh, about to embark in this center battle going on with Brock Hoffman. Yeah, for the whole class, for me, uh, the, the general vibe that I get from them is 
number one, all of them seem very humble to be here, uh, which is just such a good class. class. Yeah, they they all really love football. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like cliche to say, I suppose, but you can tell who loves football and who don't. Yep, You can. And when you look at this group, um, they're very coachable. The maturity from them is what has stood out to me initially to Jess's point, just how they're taking questions, how calm they look. You know, and because let's just be real, this is a lot for these kids yeah. coming in here, the lights, the camera action, all the stuff that's <laughs> going on here at the star. Yeah. Um, th this is a lot. And I think that they handled rookie mini camp with grace. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them were. I, and, and again, when you listen to every one of the coaches interviews and stuff, yeah. they're talking about the maturity. They're talking about the, the preparation that some of these players are taking. I'm very excited about this class. Um, I mean, it's yet to be seen the, the on-field ability yeah. right now, but I will say just from them being coachable, teachable, mature, what they're going to bring to this locker room, I think it's it's going to be a good balance for them to be here. I really like them. When you talk about coaches' interviews, head coach Mike McCarthy shared his thoughts after rookie mini camp um, on this rookie class. Go ahead and take a listen. You know, this process of having an opportunity to, to coach the football, the scheme, the language, you know, putting the ball in play, starting points and to see the way they've reacted to it and, and what they're able to do on the a.m. and p.m. work on the field is uh, very impressive. I, you know, it's you always you always hear the statement. This is the best group we've ever had. And, um, and, I, and we feel like we say that every year. But um, I do not recall, you know, a young quarterback coming in here, you know, on a tryout and commanding the huddle in the quality of you know just the reps of getting in and out of the huddle and, and the understanding being this high. Now this is obviously comments um, based off of the fact that we'll, kind of what Aisha had mentioned. You can't really gauge the success of these players because they haven't really dressed out fully. They're not in pads, not even in helmets either. So uh, kind of hard to really gauge their physical ability. Uh, but when you talk about a guy who, like Tyler Guyton, um, who came in two days after, I believe, he got drafted, yeah. got an Airbnb to just get yep. to work, um, these players are hungry. These players are so ready to uh, to get out there and, and produce, possibly produce for this team. And I think that they also understand what's at stake as well because Jerry Jones is not hidden from the fact that they need these young guys to step up yeah, really and nice. they're going to be relying yeah. on them. Out of all of these guys, drafted, undrafted, who do you feel has the mm, best chance at starting? I mean, I think I said mine already, uh, really? but I'll, I'll say a different one. Um, man, it, it's so hard because, honestly, they all just have that attitude uh, of a starting you know, NFL player. I'm going to go, obviously, I, I think Cooper Beebe. I, I think he has potential. Uh, I think, obviously, Tyler Guyton. We, we know that. Yeah. Um, That's about it. He has to start. Yeah. <laughs> I was I mean, about to say, no, I was about <laughs> to say, like, let's just keep it a bean. Yeah. yeah. It's, about, it's yeah. about three of them that are going to need yep. to yeah. start. Yeah. yeah. Um, I I guess, are you you okay? I'm just spiral. <laughs> it, yeah, it's a, it's a hard one. It's a hard um, one. Um. I mean, I think Marshawn Nealon has a good chance too. I, I become a starter. Yeah, I, I, I don't think instantly. I don't think it's it, it's going to mm -hmm. be like a week one. You're you're lining up. I yeah. think maybe uh, like we're talking about can't have enough depth. Yeah, that competition. You, you need you yeah. need DEs. Like you you need to have depth because those motors are going to run dry real quick. From mm -hmm. what it sounds like that this uh, Zimmer scheme is going to do to them. So. You, you need as many guys ready to go as you can because you you know it's a long season. Yeah. You need the depth, and, and we've seen what happens when you don't have enough depth in a position and you're running low and then everything has to kind of schematically change up. And I, I don't know. I, I think that's a to-be-determined for now. We're, I'm going to leave it at Guyton and, and BB. I think Marshawn Nealon is going to mm. push Sam Williams in mm. a way that is going to be healthy. Yeah. Yep. Um, just kind of keeping, you know, just kind of looking at Sam and, and li listening to some of his uh, his attitude as of late and, and some of the things he's doing to, to get himself ready for the season. It seems like he's focused and it, he should be. Yeah. Um, because Marshawn is this, this uh, these coaches, the way that they've spoken about Marshawn Nealon, um, they think highly of him as well. I think yeah. he will work his way into this rotation. But for me, to answer your question, um, I think Jess hit both of them. I'm really curious to see 
how Maurice uh, Maurice Lafau how what mm-hmm. he does and how he gets onto the field. But Kalen Carson is the guy. Ooh. That's what, yeah. That's yeah. the guy. That's if, if we're talking about yeah. who outside of those gentlemen, who is gonna maybe be a starter? Kalen Carson has mm-hmm. a huge opportunity to find his way on the field early. And again, we have to be considerate of. I, you know, listen. Seem like Trayvon's uh, recovery has gone really well. Seems yeah. like he should be in position to possibly be ready. However. Um, we just like like I said, Zim likes to throw out different looks. He likes mm-hmm. to do some different coverages. I think Kalen Carson is a guy that could definitely a uh, cornerback out of Wake Forest could really find his way on the field early mm-hmm. in the season. Would you play him more uh, at the boundary or more nickel, kind of switching him out with Jordan Lewis? Well, I mean, I think he has the opportunity to play nickel. Both. I think yeah. that his value. I think if you put him too far on the outside, it takes away from his value as an open field tackler mm. and some of the things he's able to do um, in the in the run uh, game. Run game. Uh, this is a fierce competitor, and I think he, he takes – he takes this game very personally. He's going to compete mm-hmm. through the whistle, and so I, I, and and Jordan Lewis really came along towards the end of the year last yeah. year. Yeah. He might have been your His best defender mm-hmm. towards the end of the year. So, um, him and that rook, maybe for that nickel spot, yeah. is going to be yeah. something to keep an eye on. And uh, Trayvon and mm. Deron Bland on the outside. Who? Anything yeah. but I knew it was coming. You should have known it was coming. Come on. I don't know why Kayla you did Carson not know. Kayla Carson is my guy. Uh, so. I also <laughs> want to point out, too, so um, he's coming off of a foot injury that kept him out of the senior senior bowl in the combine. He's, he's said to be a full go at this point, but it could be helpful for Jordan Lewis, who also mm-hmm. obviously had that horrific foot injury, to come in and kind of teach him how to, like, work through post-injury with a foot because mm-hmm. that's obviously you need your foot uh, yeah. to be a quarterback. <laughs> um, but also what I was going to say as far as Kalen Carson, Bones Fossil mentioned him specifically yesterday as well, talking to the him special about teams. special teams yeah. involvement. Mm-hmm. So I think uh, this whole new rule change, the kickoff rule change, could benefit a guy like Kalen Carson. Yep. Uh, and, and I think – you're going to see a lot of those roster spots kind of be determined because by of this rule change and how much yeah. they need those bigger body, longer body guys in order to be effective on this special team, special, special teams yeah. uh, rule change. So I think, look, he can obviously put in the work, uh, you know, on defense, but I also think for somebody like him, you start working with Bones Fossil, you get where you can get in and, and you go from there because special teams is going to matter more, I think this season than it has Mm -hmm. before because of this rule change. I can agree with that as well. But I I think defensively working with Al Harris in this amount of time, I think he's just going to skyrocket. Skyrocket. Just because when you look back at what he did at Wake Forest, I believe he only had like eight pass breakups. But the interceptions were there. He just couldn't come down with the ball and something that I feel like working on that being a ball hawk and learning from Trayvon Diggs learning from Deron Bland mm-hmm. and even Al Harris that's gonna definitely determine on uh, the starting ability for yeah, him I as well so at Wake Forest he had 29 pass breakups there during his time there and three picks so uh, if you could turn all of those into a <laughs> that picks, part. look, that's that part. Deron Bland. That but part. that's why they say that Trayvon yeah. and guys like Deron Bland are are so special because yeah. mm-hmm. the, it's it's easier said than done to to catch that ball when yeah. it's in the air. And so yeah, he's he mentioned it actually in his interview. Yeah. Is, and he said he couldn't give up the secret sauce. He couldn't give up the the, the secret. But this this coaching staff does teach retaining turnover so that is something well getting turnover mm-hmm. so that is something that he can improve on his game as well but he's tough yeah and i think he would make a phenomenal slot corner yeah what's up what do you sorry this is something sorry that i'm like when, when sorry, we see news come in through netflix has Twitter. announced a documentary series that tells the definitive story of jerry jones and his unique journey to transforming the dallas cowboys franchise the 10 episode series will explore america's Ten. team Ten. through never before seen footage and interviews with Jerry Jones as well as some of the all-time great players. Ten episodes? Ten is... You know, it was Stranger Things was that many? You know what? Stranger Things had like five seasons. <laughs> How girl, many please. episodes? I was thinking was Bridgerton. Doesn't that come out tomorrow? New season of Bridgerton? It's a great show, by the way. It's so good. It's so good. So good. Sorry. Phone on D&D. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Phone on D&D. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Phone on D&D. Tomorrow. Dearest Seek reader. Help. Bye. <laughs> don't call me. Don't talk to me. I don't want to hear. Seek oh help. Seek <laughs> help.
Why wow, I finally got you to do the British accent. I'm dying. That was amazing. Come on. You got to do, do it again. again. Do it again. Do so, Say something Cowboys though. Yeah. Something Cowboys related. Want to do it, please? Yuck. I, Come on. Do it. Do it. Do I it. I almost threw up. Come on. You got it. Hee haw. Oh, I know you playing. Ah. I know you playing with me right now. Man. <laughs> Dearest Rita. All right, dearest reader. Sorry, got, sorry got... to interrupt that conversation. I had, to, I had to show you. No, no, but it's okay. We did see uh, some film crews last year kind of following yeah. Jerry around. So cool to know uh, what it was for. Yeah. Yeah. Cool to also know more about these injury updates. We heard from this coaching yeah. position coaches yesterday. Mm-hmm. Just kind of give us a good, giving us us. Woo, man, I can't even talk you today. You got this. Giving us a little update on the status of of the players and we're gonna be talking about that in the next break you're watching girls talk boys talk presented by jigsaw the preferred dating partner of the dallas cowboys we'll be right back (laughs) at jigsaw dating we obviously want the cowboys to bring that sixth ring home but to be honest we're more focused on finding the person who will put a ring on your finger that's why we created a dating app that reveals your face through meaningful conversation so you can date deeper because it's personality that matters the most not looks join jigsaw dating today Dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. You know that sound anywhere. It's the crisp crunch of that first nacho chip. With its perfect cheese to sour cream ratio sitting atop a layer of delicious beans, it's a sip away from perfection. That's what we're looking for. Add a delicious, refreshing Pepsi and we've achieved absolute nacho nirvana. Because while you can pile those nachos high with every spicy, cheesy, savory topping, there's no topping a cool Pepsi finish. Nachos, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. The 2024 PBR World Finals are taking over AT&T Stadium. It all starts on May 17th with, with Kid Rock's Rock and Rodeo. Then on May 18th and 19th, the finalists compete in the 2024 PBR Championship. Let's rock and ride. Three-day tickets are now on sale at SeatGeek.com, the official ticketing provider. A partner. Ticketing partner of AT&T Stadium. Yeehaw. There you go. Yeehaw. It's like yeehaw. I'm yeehaw. sorry. Just playing. Oh, yeah. I forgot to shout out Michael Parsons. He is yeah. the Bleacher Report Gridiron first to hold a leadership title at the sports media company. He will be taking care of their content. They're developing new strategies, their shows, social media stuff, all that great stuff. Love Obviously, it. we've seen what Michael yeah. Parsons has done this offseason with his own podcast. Shout out to him. Yeah, Good it's him. exciting. I remember when I first met Mike. Well, normally when I first meet all the guys, I asked them. What's next? Yeah. If this is all, if this all came to an end, what else mm-hmm. you got? Because a lot of them don't think about that like that. They but don't. also too, when they're retiring, most of these guys are retiring early, mm-hmm. mid thirties. They have so much life to live. So I asked him what he was gonna do, and he expressed to me that getting into the media field and stuff was something he really desired. So it's really cool to see him um, venturing out, and not only venturing out, but uh, making moves and, and progressing in it because this is this is a big deal. Like yeah. I know a lot of people are trying to diminish it and stuff like that. I'm like, no. Like yeah. and, and it also just shows promise on these these players being forward thinking outside of this game because it can consume you. It can yeah. consume you. It consumes us. Yeah. So I'm excited for him. And and he's doing. You also have to appreciate the coaches for understanding that these players have lives outside of right. football. And it's a and different accountability. Yep. Different right. accountability. They yes. have different interests outside of yep. football as well, as long as they're handling their business here at work. They and embrace that's, it. Yeah. yeah, Jeff Scunina talked about that as well because he was asked about Mark, Michael, yeah. his mm-hmm. podcast, and how do you kind of balance you know, making sure that he stays uh, f- available and focused at practice. And they're like, it's fine. I mean, they, they yeah. handle business when they're at work. And as long as you do that, we're fine. But I appreciate the coaches just allowing them to kind of uh, go and explore their interests. I agree. I also want to say just what a smart locker room this is mm-hmm. as far as thinking ahead of their futures. There's yeah. been so many guys within this locker room that we've had the honor to talk to about their outside mm-hmm. business ventures yeah, or things that they're yeah. investing in or, or wanting to put forward for their futures or their family's futures. And, um, you know, to anybody who's saying that, this means they're going to be distracted outside of the game or whatever. Guys, let me just put in perspective like this. 
think of it as your job, your day-to-day job, and how much it, I'm sure it consumes your day-to-day life. And you, not as an NFL player, get to go home and have your outlets of, mm-hmm. of finding something that, you know, hopefully makes you happy and, and gives you mental clarity and peace. These players, players deserve to do the same thing and invest in their futures as well. Yes. Especially mm-hmm. because your motor isn't going to last forever. Your body, yeah. unfortunately, doesn't last forever as much as most of these players want it to. The reality of this sport and this game is that it's rough on your body. You don't have forever. You can't rely on your body. You never know what can happen. I'm proud of Micah for investing, you know, in his future. He has kids to to think about and, and invest for. So anybody who's saying that this is going to be a distraction, guys, it's not going to be. It's Micah Parsons. He is so locked in yeah. when you go into that locker room uh, day in and day out. And I, I think it's a fantastic uh, venture for him. Yeah. And I'm excited to see what he does in it. And mm-hmm. if it does. Sorry, that was oh, a little no, bit of good. a soapbox. No, well, no I am, but if it does. Yeah. Sounds like this coaching staff is prepared to yes. snatch some wigs if they need to. Yeah, they're wigs not. Is crazy. They're not afraid. They're not afraid to put their foot down. Yeah. So snatching wigs is crazy. <laughs> Listen, that's insane. They they seem like they're not afraid. <laughs> yeah. This coaching staff, like if you listen to the verbiage and mm-hmm. some of the things, they they're gonna hold these these guys accountable. But yeah, let them have their outlet. Ain't no shut up and dribble over here. Yep. Get yeah. out of here. Coaches yep. are not afraid to snatch wigs. <laughs> Players. Are not afraid to step up this offseason. We talk about the injured ones as well. We got Trayvon Diggs, who is expected to be back <laughs> for training yeah, camp. Yeah, yeah. Did y'all see how Demar- excited Al Harris was? Yes. He, it, the yes. way, like he couldn't he even cussed. hold it back. I know. He cussed. Yeah. I know. We can't. We can't repeat what he yeah. said. But yeah, he because, did. Yeah. I mean, okay. as a quarterback, you're gonna have to make some business decisions. <laughs> it's it's yeah. Yo. <laughs> I'm getting excited. Yo, go ahead. No, go okay. ahead. I, was, I was just going to go through the list real quick. Demarvin Overshawn is on track to be back Yay. for a training camp. Yeah. CJ Goodwin. What a good win. A good win. Uh, he apparently feels good, according to Coach Bones Fossil. And Mozzie Smith, after having off-season shoulder surgery, he is now above 300 pounds. Let's go. Dun, 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 dun. Schoolmaker Which, coming off shoulder. Oh, yeah. Schoolmaker yeah, school. as well. Damn, John Stevens coming oh, off of ACL. Uh, Lunda was Forgot. asked about John Stevens Jr. Mm-hmm. said he's doing good, progressing well. So there you go. I, I, it's giving healthy. It, it, it seems like there has not been any setbacks. Where's <laughs> knock on wood? Um, no setbacks yeah. so far in, in any yeah. of the recovery for these guys, which is exactly what you want to hear. Uh, going into OTAs and mini camp, mm-hmm. and you know, before we know it, ladies, training camp. So. You're going to need them all. Hello. Yeah. You're going to need every single one of them humans, too. Which of these guys could make the most impact? <gasps> right away. Mm-hmm. Oh. Say the names again. CJ Goodwin, Trayvon Diggs, DeMarvion Overshawn, Mazzie Smith. We'll go with just those for right John now. Stevens John Stevens John Stevens and Luke. And Luke. Marty. Yeah. I think That's the, hard. You listen, to, you listen to these coaches talk mm-hmm. about DeMarvion Overshawn. Okay. You listen to Scott McCurley. T- like the... Mm. The sadness in his voice <laughs> when he was on the draft show and he mentioned what it felt like when Demo went down. They have a real vision for him. And I remember, you remember that preseason yeah. game last year when we started seeing him fly around? Yes. I don't know if you've seen it yet. Yes. Mm-mm. It but was week you, three. It, it, it or felt, week two. It felt week different. Two season. I'm going to put it like that. It, it felt different. It, it felt clicked. like, hey, that player is special. Yep. Mm, so yep. him coming off this injury, I'm, I know he's taking his his, uh, his uh, therapy and stuff seriously. I know he's ready. I feel like he can make such an impact um, for that linebacker core. Um, even coming off this injury, he's – He's he's my guy. He's the one that I think is going to make the difference right away. So excited about Demo. I am. Oh my gosh. I'm I'm, I'm I vibe with Al Harris when he was like jumping for joy talking about <laughs> Trayvon. Like I'm ready for him to see Trayvon yeah. come back. Demarvian Overshone, just having all of those guys. Jordan Lewis, Deron Bland, right there as your DB core. Holy cow! Mm. Holy cow! I almost cussed, so I had to say cow. Mm. <laughs> Barnacles. Um, but what yeah. I am gonna say yeah. is that is exciting for me. I'm gonna go see Jay Goodwin, and and mm. this is because specifically I asked John Fossil about him yesterday because I think you forget what a staple CJ Goodwin is within your special teams Ace. unit and how much shifting around yeah. special teams had to do last year because one person and they fa- was not there and they weren't as good and they weren't and they, and they you missed know what? him big yeah. he and is he going that. to be so 
vital, mm-hmm. so vital in ensuring that your offense is getting a good spot we pray, every yeah. single time that they go on the field. And look, that's a lot to say about one guy and one player. C.J. Goodwin is the veteran in the room for a reason who helps mm-hmm. all of his guys around him. I mean, you're talking about like the general of your special teams unit. I get it. Special teams isn't flashy or that big of a deal. Mm-hmm. He's going to be your difference maker in making sure the dominoes fall where they need to to make sure that this new kickoff rule is going to give you good field advantage every mm-hmm. time your yeah. offensive unit is stepping it's on It's going to be field. exciting to see how Bones – manipulates yeah he was so excited talking about it he He manipulates these new rules and to your point i it's going to be a lot more difficult to do that without a guy that is as smart as cj goodwin he's been here he's seen all the differences i'm excited too for even a kamante turpin because he Mm -hmm. they're they're taking the rules that he thrived on yeah yeah okay Uh, what about who's yours well (laughs) who's yours girl we're not going to leave you out, I'm going to be a little different. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm going to go a little different. Okay. And I know that Cowboys Nation is probably doubting Let this it out. player right here. Let it out. Vent. We're here for you, But sis. we need Mozzie Smith. Mozzie Smith. Yes, I believe please. that Mozzie Smith is going to come in there and just have such a dominant year, too. And I think that because he knows that he has to. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Yeah. I'm now we're go we're, we're, we're rooting. We're I'm, rooting, a, for, I'm big rooting dog. for Mozzie. I mean, because yeah. you look at back at what he did at Michigan, such a dominant player, run stopper, and that's something that the Cowboys need. That's something that they need. Zim's and, new system and is going to help I think him this so coaching, much. Yeah. Point. I think yeah. just the language of hearing how they're talking mm-hmm. about it and getting back to the basics, mm-hmm. working on his stance. Yeah. Get off. Those are the things that we were looking for from him last year. I think it is going to be important to. Uh, in Dan Quinn's system, mm-hmm. guys are asked to do a lot more. It's right. complex. It's mm-hmm. a lot of twists, stunts, stuff like that. Don't get me wrong. Zim, Zim does those things, but the base will be the base. And yeah. I think that will make things – it will simplify things in a way yeah. for these young guys to just – hone in on this mm-hmm. this position and to be able to improve from there you, oh, oh, sorry. Ahead, I was just going to say it gives him the opportunity to be just the classic nose tackle yeah. with the run stop and the blocking as compared to trying to rush up the mm-hmm. field mm-hmm. which isn't his strong suit and that's yeah. okay but what it seems like Can't is be that this advice. coaching staff is trying to really hone in on what made him so good at Michigan right. and so mm-hmm. I can appreciate a coaching staff that said hey look we know he struggled but let's do what we can to get him back to where he was. And it started with, like you said, hey, let's start with the basics. Zim mm-hmm. said this yesterday. Basics, footwork, stance, stance, all of those things. Weight room, given he's coming off yeah. of a shoulder surgery, so you can't do much. But to your point, Nicole, fantastic pick. I'm, glad, t- I'm glad you're being a mozzie stan. Let's, let's talk, talk about a coaching staff knowing their personnel. It, facts. Let's talk about it. I'm not. Preach about, about it. I'm just these lights are bright. <laughs> these lights is bright, but there's some shade in here. No, my goodness. I need an umbrella. Lip or shade. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but no. I mean, it's crucial. You got to know your. Per- you got to know your personnel. Sorry, there was some shade in here. No, I and bet. I love the I love the <laughs> honesty from the staff. No, it's true. Yeah. Every one of these coaches that has talked about him, they have owned up to mm-hmm. he struggled. We know he struggled. Yep. We, we know, know where it was he disappointing. Struggled. We know where he struggled. It's it's. I don't want you to sugarcoat it. Mm-hmm. Say it. We synced it. Yeah. I synced it numerous times, unfortunately. And can we talk about film. how it's okay for a first-year player to struggle because yeah. it's hard to come in, especially at the nose tackle yeah. position? Can we can we talk about that? A yeah. lot of factors played into goodness into him not being where we expected for him to be last year. But I, I also but that's gone. That's gone. We are, we are turning the page. We're giving him out with the old and with the new. Come Goodbye. on, have some Clouds empathy out here. Hello, Scott. Well, it's time to turn the page. That was a high school musical I song. I love it. I love your pick. Go. Yeah, that was a great pick. <laughs> Thanks. I love y'all's too. It's a great picks. We're about to be out. Yeah. Yeah, we gotta go. That is a wrap for today's episode. We'll see y'all next Thursday, Cowboys Nation. Bye. Bye. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about-